Hey everybody, my name is Sid. I just finished my first year of computer science at Georgia Tech and I'm going to be taking you through a tour of my programming setup. I just recently switched to Vim from VS Code and I'll get into why I did that in a little bit. But before we can do that, we need to talk about everything else that comes in my setup that leads to why I'm choosing Vim. This is going to be the setup that I'll be using for the rest of the summer, for my internship, for my work projects, for my side projects, anything and everything that I'm going to be coding, I'm going to be using this setup for. So let's jump straight into it first of all by talking about my terminal that I'll be using. So the terminal emulator that I'm using is the Windows terminal. And that's not the one, that's not CMD. It's not the one that comes pre-installed on your computer. If you open up the Microsoft store and you just search up Windows terminal, you'll find it. It's pretty cool. I've been using it for about a week now, I would say. And it's actually really useful. It's very nice. There's a lot of custom, uh, there's a lot of custom things that you can do with it and make it look really good and all of that. So I highly suggest that if you're on Windows that you install that and use that as your terminal. Before I used this in my old setup, I used to use Hyper and Git Bash, which you might've seen in some of my previous videos. But now I'm using the Windows terminal emulator and let's talk about the actual shell that I'm using and where these commands are actually being executed. So I'm not using Windows as my main development environment. I'm using WSL, so it's still Windows, but it's WSL for those of you who don't know is Windows subsystem for Linux. So it basically lets you run a Linux distribution on your Windows computer without having to set up, you know, dual booting or just like removing Windows altogether. It's really nice, very convenient, especially if you don't want to dual boot because, you know, I game a lot and I can't dual boot. Otherwise that takes too much time and I don't want to get rid of Windows entirely because I still want to play Valorant. So anyways, I use WSL running Ubuntu. And on top of that, the actual shell that I'm using is ZSH. I'm using ZSH because it has some nice plugins. Like I get this autocomplete thing, which is cool. It's not very smart all the time, but you know, it's smart enough sometimes. And that's good because I get to autocomplete things and it makes my life a lot easier. Also, it looks pretty good. And the actual theme that I'm using for this is something called Starship which is which is a prompt for a bunch of different shells. It works for ZSH, it works for just normal plain old bash, and it works for fish too. And it looks really nice. I think you guys would agree that it looks really cool. There's a few cool things I can do, you know, depending on whether you're in a Git repository or not, it'll tell you, you know, what branch you're on. It'll tell you what programming language or what environment the project is dependent on. So obviously this is a JavaScript project. So Node.js is the package manager. And it'll also tell you what version of the project you're on if you have something like, if you have something like a package.json or, you know, a package.json, something that specifies the project version. It'll tell you, it gives you a lot of nice information and it looks pretty cool, which is why I'm using it. Now that's my terminal setup. Um, a lot of the plugins and stuff, I'm not really using too many plugins. The only plugin that you'll see here that, you know, might not be pre-installed with everything you're using is the autocomplete plugin. And there's plenty of, there's plenty of plugins that'll do this for you, but this is what I'm using. It's very, very easy install. You just edit your file and none of the dot files in this video are my own. I'll just leave links in the description so you can set up your terminal to look exactly like mine if you want to, but I suggest, you know, trying to make it your own a little bit. But that's what my shell looks like. And now obviously we could talk about the title of this video and why you probably clicked. Why am I using Vim? over something like VS Code that probably has a lot more extensions. So if we go to what my VS Code looks like, right? I have a lot of extensions as well. I have 58 extensions. Um, a lot of these are just color themes, uh, but there's also quite a few that are actually important for me to be developing. I have Git Blame. So if I have a, you know, something I've committed to Git, this probably isn't the best project to do that. Is there anything in that I've committed to Git? Git, not Git. Okay, I can't see anything off the bat, but if there was, then, you know, there's, I have a lot of extensions that just help me out. Autocomplete, and of course I have GitHub Copilot, which helps me a lot when I'm coding because it autocompletes a lot of code for me, but I don't wanna use GitHub Copilot too much this summer. I wanna get a lot, get my hands dirty a lot. And plus Copilot suggestions sometimes are also pretty bad when you're working on niche things and then it becomes a hindrance rather than anything else. But you know, I have things like GitLens, which help me use Git very effectively and just a, a lot of extensions that make VS Code great, but also bloated. Now you don't notice it because you know, if I open a VS Code, actually you kind of notice it. That's like two seconds, maybe. That's like two seconds of boot up time. And then, you know, if I open up NeoVim, that's instant. And the nice thing about NeoVim, I'm not using plain old Vim, by the way. I'm using NeoVim with some config files that make it look easier. 
that make it look great on the eyes. I mean, like, look at that bottom bar right there. Very, very nice. And it comes with a lot of helpful things, like being able to, you know, have a file tree, explore your files this way. Just really nice. And it's also a nice coding environment as well. If I, like, there's things it knows. The autocomplete isn't the best, but you can make it better. I'm gonna try and make it better. There's plugins that help you do that. You know, I know what branch I'm on. It tells me things about Git that are nice. You know, see, now it's identifying. I just added a new line. So it's telling me, okay, you've made, you know, you've added a new line. And if I were to do this, then it's like, okay, you deleted a line. And now you, you know, you're, when you commit this, the commit is gonna read as you having changed one line by adding it and then removing one line by subtracting it. So again, a lot of nice things uh, that I get from just using Vim. Plus, NeoVim, you start developing a lot fast just by using all these keybinds, right? You're no longer dependent on, like I haven't touched my mouse uh, since I opened up Vim. And that's good because, you know, if you're not using your mouse, you're saving a lot of time. If both your hands are on the keyboard at all times and you don't have to take one hand off and make it touch the mouse, you're gonna be moving a lot faster. And that's what I wanna do. I'm not the best at using Vim. I'm not the best at using Vim and I wanna get good at it, which is why I'm gonna be using it for the summer, just to get good. Now, of course, if I do end up having a project that requires me to, you know, be doing, be working with a really large code base and, you know, running a lot of automated tests and debugging and all of that, then I'm probably not gonna be using Vim. I'll probably go back to using VS Code so I can run tests easier, all of that good stuff. But if I don't have to be doing that, and you know, if I'm working on a side project with, you know, not a ton of files, I'm not gonna be writing a ton of tests, although I should be, um, then I'm gonna be back to using uh, Vim because it's easy, it's fun, and you know, what else is there to do? Now, another interesting thing is that, uh, I've already mentioned that, you know, I haven't been using Vim for a while. So these next three months, if I'm practicing, and using Vim every day for three months, theoretically, I should see my productivity in terms of writing code to go up by a lot because I won't be, you know, I can start typing close to how I think. Now, my normal typing speed by itself is already pretty fine. It's like 110 words per minute or like 100 words per minute, but I'm not that great at writing code quick because I end up having to delete a lot of things with my hands, not move across my screen fast, and I use my mouse, my mouse a lot, which tells me now, and I wanna be fast, and you know, a lot of old heads in the programming scene were like, use Vim, use Vim. My, uh, programming teacher in 11th and 12th grade, he only used Vim for like everything he did. So that kind of inspired me. And I'm like, if by the end of these three months, I feel like Vim didn't really help me much, my productivity hasn't gone up a lot, then I'll just go back to keep using VS Code for the rest of my time. And you know, if I do see a marginal increase, then I can just use Vim key bindings for VS Code because there's plenty of extensions that allow you to do that. There's extensions that say, hey, you know, you can get, you, you can get your Vim key bindings you can use whatever you like about Vim in VS Code without sacrificing all the extensions that you have. And they might be saying, why not do that right now? Well, because I wanna learn Vim in the natural environment of the terminal. This saves me a lot of time. If I wanna run some code really quickly, all I have to do is just, you know, okay, that was embarrassing, but I just quit and I run the code that I want and that makes things very easy on me. I can have another terminal up already already have that in the directory that I want it to be. And then boom, I just run the code again. And it's very efficient, you know, quick switches are nice. I just get to switch between my tabs of terminals really quickly. I get to open up, I get to open up Vim. I do a lot of great things, you know. And of course, like with Vim, all of this stuff is not really difficult to do. Now, once you learn the basic movements, you know, you'll see a pace increase already. And after that, you know, you learn more things. You'll just keep going faster and faster and faster. And that's what I'm gonna be doing this summer. So that's my setup. I know it was a little bit long-winded at the end, but that's basically all there is to it. I'm using NeoVim. I'm using ZSH on the Windows Terminal emulator. And that's about it. At some points, I'll come back. I'll use VS Code if I feel like I need to. Otherwise, I'm pretty much chilling. And you know, if you want some inspiration for where I'm getting all this information, then my Vim setup is from NVChad. NVChad, which is this basically pre-built Vim config for you to use already. If you don't want something that like that, you can also use Lunar Vim, which is another config. And the guy that made Lunar Vim also has something called NeoVim from scratch, 
so you can understand how you can build your own NeoVim config. And I'm gonna be doing that over uh, the summer as well. I'm gonna be slowly scaling down on NVChat and building up my own config to replace it. Now, that's kind of all I really have to say. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe, join my Discord server if you wanna talk about a bunch of coding stuff with a lot of cool people. Links in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great day. Peace out.